Want to add self-healing AI to your existing Selenium test for free? Have you seen this cool tool that allows you to emulate network and system conditions for chaos and resilience testing? Need to know how to start testing Web3? Find out the answers to these and all other end-to-end -end full pipeline DevOps, automation, performance, and security testing in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of March 6th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Guild News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools is a next generation test automation platform, which is powered by visual AI, which helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and reduce costs with what I think is the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But don't just take my word for it. Seeing is believing. So try it for yourself today. Create your free account now by clicking in the link in the comment down below. And while you're there, why not like and leave a comment to subscribe and get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. So I had a great interview on my podcast with Anna all about a cool library that helps you drive your existing Selenium test with self-healing technology. Now, mostly when I talk to people on my podcast, anytime they talk about AI machine learning, it's always a paid solution. Here's an open source solution that Anna created that may be able to help you take your Selenium test to the next level. So Anna told me all about Helenium. And if you check it out, it brings you to the website and it just goes over some of the key functionality that they created in this library that improves the stability of your Selenium test because it handles changes of updating web elements dynamically while you're running tests. You can add this to existing or new Selenium tests just by importing a library. It is open source and it really should help you improve the stability of your Selenium-based automation tests. So this will help you minimize your maintenance time, help make your pipeline greener, a whole bunch of awesomeness that comes from using this library. So definitely check it out and let me know what you think. So another thing that caught my attention while I was on GitHub is another library or another um, open source solution that helps you with no code API testing. A lot of times when we talk about no code, it relates to usually uh, web-based automation, but this is one of the first open source solutions that you saw that actually applies just to API testing. And this is called Keyploy. And it is a no-code API testing platform, helps you create unit tests and data mocks from API calls. So it converts API calls into test cases and mocks are automatically generated with actual requests and responses automatically. So another cool piece of technology that's available for free right now on GitHub. So once again, I have a link to that in the first comment down below. And as you're writing tests, if you're having problems knowing what locators to use, there's an awesome solution by Sanjay Kumar that came out a while ago called Selectors Hub. And he just tweeted out that there's a new release of Selectors Hub. And the Selectors Hub now creates, allows you to interact with the uh, Shadow DOM, has a lot of new improvements to the command feature, and it even has better support for the Cypress command. So if you're using Selectors Hub, if you have new Selectors Hub, definitely check out the latest version 4.3.3. So just another tool you should probably have as part of your automation toolkit for sure. So you probably have been hearing a lot about Web3, crypto, uh, all these new technologies that are coming out. And how do you actually test these technologies? Well, I found an awesome resource that helps you do just this. This is a quick intro to testing DApps, decentralized applications. And this is brought to you by Rian Lewis. Rian actually was a part of our test guild a few years ago. Really smart tester, developer, especially when it comes to crypto and she has a lot of great resources here listed out as how you actually can get started testing Web3, what you need to do, how to get started, tools and technologies. Really well laid out. It covers both manual and automated testing and goes over a little bit about bug bounties as well. So if you want to stay up to speed on the latest and greatest, this is definitely a must read. So thank you, Rian, for that. So I used to work for a healthcare company that did a lot of testing in the regulated type of environment. So this next article really caught my attention that Tricentis has acquired TX3, which is a digital validation platform for life sciences. So TX3 is a provider for automating quality and compliance software testing solutions for life sciences. And so by this acquisition, building upon Tricentis's AI-powered continuous testing platform, the addition of the TX3 uh, provides greater specialization and increased capabilities to address the unique needs of the healthcare and life science industries. So really cool development. I like how companies are investing in this particular area. Like I said, this is really difficult to test when you're in a kind of regulated kind of environment, especially when it has to do with healthcare. So if you're a tester in the life sciences, definitely give this solution a look and let me know what you think. 
So speaking about AI and testing, I actually found another article on how Pharos AI raises $16 million to launch an engineer ops platform for software development. And a lot of times when we talk about AI, it's about testing or helping Selenium test or test in general. This actually focuses on engineering ops, which I thought was kind of interesting. So what is EngOps? It looks at how developers work and seeks to improve processes by removing bottlenecks and eliminating barriers between teams. The goal is to relate software engineering to the broader organization, tying software development to business outcomes by including stakeholders, improving visibility, and creating opportunity to collaborate. And what I thought was interesting is this article actually quotes Mabel, which is a well-known provider of test automation software, that developers pegged slow processes, the speed of adoption, and restricting budgets and funding as their top blockers. Cool use of AI machine learning. Haven't used it myself, but definitely give it a whirl. Let me know if it works for you. And as I was researching this week's show, I came across Andy Knight, the Automation Panda. He actually has a webinar replay on modern cross-browser testing in JavaScript using Playwright, which is really becoming a more and more popular automation framework. So in this webinar, Andy's gonna go over the importance and evolution of cross-browser testing, critical requirements for scalable cross-browser testing initiatives, and pros and cons of different approaches, as well how to accelerate cross-browser cross-device testing for integration to CI, CD using JavaScript with Playwright. I think it's a really timely topic, so thank you, Andy, for covering it. And I think you should definitely check this out as well. Once again, it'll be in the first comment down below. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So on this new show, we have a lot of topics that come up and one of them that comes up often is observability. So this next article talks about how Splunk and AWS are coming together to unlock application observability through open telemetry. With enterprises shifting how they use their cloud infrastructure based on increased automation, observability becomes a key component needed to view the complexities involved for optimized results. And so open source has been a big enabler of a lot of refactoring in the cloud. And open telemetry is a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs, helps you eliminate the challenge of manually driving into logs and correlating requests between services. And it also has a video on speeding innovation on AWS, which is actually by Splunk. I also found a cool utility that can help you with chaos engineering. And I'm not sure where I heard about this, probably on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Someone mentioned Toxy proxy. It's a TCP proxy to simulate network and system conditions for chaos and resilience testing. And so it's actually a framework for simulating network conditions, and it's made specifically to work in testing CI and deployment environments, supporting deterministic tampering with connections, but with support for randomized chaos and customization. So just another cool tool you should definitely have in your toolbox as a tester, especially as chaos engineering resilience testing becomes even more and more important as years goes on. As we start relying on third-party services and cloud-based providers, we need to be ready for these type of outages. And using a tool like Toxy Proxy actually allows you to do that. Last up, security news. All right, so this next article is not only on security, but it's also a money segment on how Bright Security lands 20 million for dev-focused dynamic app testing. The article goes on to talk about, depending on who you talk about in cybersecurity, there's a big shift happening now in the application security sector. The idea is that the process of ensuring that code is secure should not fall only or even predominantly to the security team. The developers themselves need to play a leading role in security. And that's why these type of tools are very important and becoming more and more important and one of the startups that is actually working on this issue is Bright Security, which was formerly known as Neural Legion. And so they just got a 20 million series A round funding for the company that they revealed a few days ago. And it goes on to talk about how in a recent survey or report, 50% of all web applications are vulnerable to at least one serious exploitable vulnerability throughout 2021. And this tool is made specifically for developers. So as we talk about all the time with shifting things left, this just helps developers get involved in security before it's already baked into the application and released to a security team over the wall. And I think it's gonna help a lot of teams build more secure apps. So definitely check that out as well. All right, for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, make sure to head on over to the links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Alpi Tools, by creating a free account and discover how to take your automation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. Once again, I'm Joe. 
My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.